Um, let's say good morning to J.P. Morosi. <laughs> may or may not have been paying attention to that bit of tomfoolery. J.P., good morning. Uh, good that power is restored in the great state of Michigan, and we see the lights are on in the Morosi household. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I had a clever transition from the last segment, but... I don't. Uh, I will say and celebrate that we do have power yet again here at our house. The kids are back in school. Very grateful for all of that and grateful to have some spring training games and WBC headlines to discuss with you both this morning. Excellent. That's all, all right. good news. And we'll get to the uh, WBC stuff a little bit later on in the program. Let's start, unfortunately, with some bad news, some injury news uh, mm. coming out of a couple of camps. First of all, uh, with the Dodgers, talk about what was announced yesterday with Gavin Lux and the ramifications of his knee injury. Yes, uh, Gavin Lux, a, a very ominous looking knee injury yesterday, running the bases from second to third. What we know at this hour is that he will have imaging done on that right knee later on today. We're not entirely sure uh, where things stand in terms of when he could potentially play again, but that is obviously not the way the Dodgers hoped Gavin Lux's 2023 season would begin. Again, it was a, a non-contact injury between second and third base he had to be carted off could not put weight on the knee again none, none of these data points are incredibly encouraging at the moment for Gavin Lux but we'll wait until there's more definitive word later on today as to what the diagnosis is when he could potentially return to the field of play what we do know is that obviously the Dodgers have been counting on Gavin Lux a lot entering 2023 they do have some potential options in-house Part of the reason why they acquired Miguel Rojas was his defensive versatility. He's someone that can certainly play the position well uh, in the field. The offense is, has been a separate question, certainly going back to what last season was for him. And Chris Taylor certainly can play some shortstop as well. But when you add all of these things up, the Dodgers guys were so enthused about how Lux came through his offseason work. Added a lot of good weight, was in tremendous shape coming in. The bat, they really liked the way that he progressed offensively last year. So if he's out for any length of time, it is really a, a tough way for the Dodgers to begin their season because of how high their hopes were for the native of the great state of Wisconsin, Gavin Lux. Hey, can we run that video again? I've, I've seen this a few times, and if you watch Gavin running, it's a ground ball to third. I, I, I've been trying to figure this out. I don't know if he thought that he had to duck the throw. Right here, he kind of ducks. Yeah, he ducked the throw. That's what kind of threw him off. It's, I know it's a non-contact, but he makes an athletic move in my mind. And that tells me a little bit more. Yeah, can, I, can I see that one more time so you guys can see what I'm looking at? Just a let, one more look real quick. So that changes, that changes the whole outlook for me. It's not just like he was just running. But if you watch, watch him duck the throw here. He kind of ducks out of the way, and that's where the, the knee yeah, yeah. kind of goes away. So, yeah. So it's just Locked not in. not good. Yeah. I, you know, right there, he's ducking out of the way, and that's that to me is the. And you know, the everybody's going to have an opinion about. Might have been hyperextended there how too. hard a guy should go in spring training, blah blah blah. Guys are playing, man. I mean, they're out there playing, and and unfortunately, stuff like this can happen. Uh, let's move you to some similarly bad news around the Rays camp, though. Maybe uh, the fact that for Tyler Glass now, it's an oblique. And not a shoulder or an elbow could be categorized as could have been worse. But tell us about Glass now status. Right, concern now for the Rays and their camp this morning, Matt and Harold as well. Uh, as Tyler Glass now is due to have an MRI later today, according to our Don Clemish of MLB.com, uh, that he had an oblique issue that crept up during a bullpen session yesterday so he lasted according to Don's report just six pitches before he had to leave that bullpen session early because of an oblique issue and the Rays hope to know sometime today the extent of it and to your point Matt there's the larger question of, of where Glass now is health wise coming off a 2022 season in which he made just two appearances at the major league level you see it there uh, there you have it there are just 11 and two thirds innings pitched last year entirely after undergoing Tommy John on August the 4th of 2021. So he has not pitched much at all. You recall how important he was in the Rays 
uh, march to the World Series back in 2020. The injury happened in 21. Um, it just has been a struggle for him to stay healthy ever since then. And we know the Rays certainly showed some commitment to Glasnow uh, by giving him a contract, certainly for 2023, expecting uh, big things from him. And, and that may still be the case. But it appears to be a bit of a speed bump here in spring training. Uh, the Rays, again, they hope to know the full extent of that injury issue sometime later today. Well, the beautiful thing about this, never beautiful with an injury, but it's early spring. You know, so this is going to give him a chance to get, get back yeah. to you the hope, season. You're hoping that MRI comes up clean. Yeah. Uh, JP, 16 games on the spring training schedule today, including two that we'll have live coverage of here on MLB Network. Uh, the Padres play in Scottsdale. Not among the games covered on MLB Network, but we Give will have... Give us some upbeat stuff. Well, we, we have highlights from this one for sure, right? <laughs> because Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to make his spring debut this afternoon. One of the most highly anticipated games of the spring is Tatis back in the Cactus League. Uh, we have heard a lot about his work this spring, both in the cage, in the outfield, which is now his primary position. He may well be strictly in a DH scenario today for manager Bob Melvin and the Padres, but a lot of curiosity. Of course, we have not seen him play in the major leagues at all in 2022. There was uh, initially the surgery. There was the PED suspension on which he must still serve sometime during the course of the regular season. He is due to return to the Padres lineup uh, on April the 20th at the major league level. At that point, he'll likely be a corner outfielder. But here is what he has done over his career. Wow. In 150 game increments, our Eric Nays did a great job researching just what a great player he is when he is on the field, when he is healthy. You see it there through his age 23 season. A lot of names that we see in Cooperstown, one that's going there in pools and then Tatis Jr. himself. So he ranked entering last year. Let's let's not forget how special of a talent he is when he's healthy. Entering last year, he was third on the MLB Network Top 100. He is still a top 50 player now, even after not playing at all last year. We're not sure what to expect when you talk about coming back from multiple surgeries, from a PED suspension. There's just a lot of curiosity. And today is a really special day to watch him because it's going to be our first look at him broadly in the Major League competition since 2021 so a, a lot of eyeballs on him and certainly by many accounts he has handled himself very well this spring uh, in terms of the attitude that he's brought to camp he understands there is still a lot uh, to do in terms of making amends for the mistake that he made last year actually both mistakes getting injured in the motorcycle accident and then of course the PED suspension so a lot of trust he has to rebuild but he's doing so with the Padres team that has its sights Firmly set on a World Series championship and what a story it's going to be if he is there contributing alongside the likes of Machado and Soto for the Padres here in 2023. Big, big expectations for that big payroll for sure. J.P. Morosi will be back with us a little bit later on with some WBC news.